What is the best way to create excellent real estate photos consistently? Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Rick McAvoy, architectural construction and real estate photographer based in the UK. I'm Bree and in this post, I'm gonna give you some pointers about how to take excellent real estate photos consistently. Consistently is, is the key thing here because um, when you're working for real estate clients, they need to know that you can consistently deliver high quality images. Let me read you the answer a bit and then I'll go into a little bit of an ad lib. Okay, the best way to take consistently excellent real estate photos is to have well practiced, highly refined image capture, image processing and data management workflows. These will help you to take efficient, high quality, these will help you to efficiently take high quality real estate photos time after time to the same high standard and with the same look, with data secure and properly managed. Now I'll start with the last one there, that data secure bit, bit of a curveball really, because it's not about creating the photos, is it? Or is it? Um, we talk a lot about taking photos and apertures and everything. We don't talk as much about data and making sure that your data is secure. So that's why I wanted to, I just wanted to make the point really in creating photographs there is that part of the process where we have them backed up and secure and we have a system in place. Now I know this sounds boring, but it is important. That's actually one of my strap lines for some of my stuff is boring but important. So there's three things I'm gonna talk about here. I'll be less than six minutes, so bear with. This is part of a series of posts about being a real estate photographer, how I see it. So the three main areas are image capture, image processing and data management. Now I'm going to go on to some of these in a lot more detail in future posts in this series of posts about real estate photography, which you can read on my website rickmacavoyphotography.com forward slash blog. Okay, that's the sales pitch out of the way. And relax. So image capture, like I say, real estate clients, busy people, lots going on. And it's a quite a fast turnaround business. People come in, they want to list their property. They want it done quickly. It's not something that's going to take a matter of weeks. They want it on there straight away because with the internet and everything, it's bang, 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 no, no, no. So real estate people, if that's the right term for them. Um, are they called realtors or something? Anyway, real estate, estate agents, call them what you want. I'm talking here about people who sell and lease not only houses, but also commercial premises. We need to broaden out a bit. It's not just houses. Real estate includes shops, offices, factories, blah, blah, blah. More shops than anything these days, isn't there? Well, in England, we haven't got many factories left. Sorry, I'll stop there. So they need to know that you, as the photographer they have appointed, will give them great images efficiently every time and also to a similar standard and look that helps i've um i've worked on my workflow great use of english i know for many years and i use exactly the same image capture image processing and data management workflows on every shoot i also do it on my travel photography stuff as well but that's another story, but it, it's the same thing. You're photographing something that's not moving. It's not got people in it. I don't do people. Not that I don't like people. I know some people and I have liked some people in the past, but no, I photograph buildings. So image capture, practice, practice, practice. Now I did um, put the revelation in here that if you live in a building, you've got something you can work with. You can practice. Photograph your house, where are you, wherever it is you live. If you know somebody else, photograph theirs, there's your practice. So the approach to taking the photos, we've got a brief, which is agreed with the client, which is your shot list. The next most important thing after the brief, because you have to deliver the brief, the shot list, you have to do that. Next thing I've got here is composition. Again, there's lots more, there's lots of reading of this on the, on the blog post, but the one thing I will say, composition is king. Nothing else matters. Sure, you've got to be in focus. You've got to get the exposure right. But if you're working for money, these are givens. They're just expectations. They're not nice to have. As is delivering the beef. Beef. 
or the brief. So, um, yeah, composition, that's the one variable. Anybody can set a camera up, but not everybody can do great composition. So that's the one thing to work on more than anything else. And the best way to do that is with practice. Okay, <clears throat> so again, composition is king. Tripod, I use a tripod for every photo I could possibly take, unless there is not room. What's next? Composition is king again. Camera settings, boring, but I use the same camera settings on every shoot. F8 or F16, ISO 100, shutter, whatever the camera picks, camera on a tripod, 17mm, 10 second cell timer, job done. I don't think about camera settings because I do the same ones all the time. Don't shoot me now, but I use HDR. Yep, three photos, take them together, chuck together in Lightroom. The more of the lights, more of the darks, makes life easier and quicker. Okay, my six minutes is up. Why six minutes, I hear you say? Um, I don't know, someone said six minutes is the optimal time for a YouTube video. So, um, yeah, what else do I go on about? Focus, blah, 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 blah. Image processing workflow. Now, I, I, I talk about image processing workflow, but in a future blog post and accompanying video, I will do a post just about how I process my real estate photos because I do something a, a bit different. There you go, a little bit of a tease for you. I use Lightroom. I'm not saying you need to use Lightroom, but I will say this. Whatever you use, use it, but learn it properly. Back to practice. Practice editing photos of buildings and you will get better at editing photos of buildings. Use one piece of software if you can. If you need another one, use that. I use Lightroom, I use Photoshop to remove stuff, and I use Luminar to replace the sky. But if it was a nice day and I don't need to remove anything, I don't go out of Lightroom and that makes me happy because it's spending less time fiddling around. Okay, data management. Now this is literally, actually physical step by step about when I put the memory cards into a case, blah, blah, blah. So check out the blog post. I won't go through that, go through that now if you want to read that. It's there. It tells you what I actually do on every shoot step by step. It should probably be a separate post called step by step guide to how I look after my memory cards or something. Not a bad idea, Rick. Okay, I'm done. Thank you for staying with me till nearly eight minutes. Okay, there's a few links on the end of the blog post. I won't mention them here, but I will mention my splendid Photography Explained podcast. Check it out on all major podcast providers. Okay, I'm done. Thanks for watching. I've been Rick McAvoy. See you on the next video. Cheers from me, Rick.